In his short time as Philippine president, Rodrigo Duterte has shown himself to be a strong man. He's quickly taken control of the military and police. His war on drugs has left the streets littered with the dead. If you destroy my country, I will kill you. And in vowing to break up a military alliance with the U.S., he doesn't hold back from threatening a superpower. Don't be me. Don't me. But beneath Duterte's tough demeanor, he's also shown himself to be a people's president. We love you! We love you! I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of 101 East, our exclusive inside access with this controversial president on his mission to transform the Philippines. Tonight, we join the president in his private jet. He's in a defiant mood. I just pissed off by so many calls from Europe. Oh, you should not put people to death. Uh, the European Union has just condemned his war on drugs, concerned he's ordering extrajudicial killings. Duterte says he's only ever threatened to kill drug suspects. My country is in deep shit with drugs, and then I can threaten. So what am I supposed to do? Pray for the criminals? Duterte's verbal tirades are legendary, and so too his stubbornness. So what's the f problem? If I look like a bad boy to them, I really don't give a sh Who are they to me? They're nothing. Some would say your actions aren't becoming of a statesman. I never went to a school called uh, the Academy for Statesmen. I am not a statesman. I do not aspire to be one. I just would like to be an ordinary president who can f the you if you were you f with me. A chorus of criticism from the EU, the US, and the UN hasn't swayed him. During the campaign, I said I will stop corruption. I will suppress drugs. I will suppress crime. And I'm doing it. Why are the foreigners complaining? I did not promise them anything. I only promised the Filipino people. But no one believed his war on drugs would be quite so bloody. Duterte's ordered thousands of drug raids. Telling officers to open fire if threatened. More than three and a half thousand drug suspects have been gunned down by police and unknown assailants. We've been invited to join this operation. Thankfully, today, no one is killed. Authorities arrest more than two dozen people. Inside a home, we find a woman pleading for mercy. <laughs> Those rounded up will be drug tested. In Duterte's world, not only dealers, but users are being jailed. This is the pointy end in the president's war on drugs, and these clearing operations are aimed at delivering results fast. I will solve drugs, criminality, pati corruption sa gobyerno. Binibigyan ko lang ang sarili ko three to six months. Since making this election promise, He's backtracked on his deadline, saying the number of drug users is far larger than he realized. Should you not have known the size of the issue? I was just a mayor. When I became a, the president, and I was, I, I mean, I realized that it was running into millions. I was horrified. 
Now I am more determined to kill those who would want to destroy my country. So how long will this war on drugs and criminality Until go the for? the last drug pusher drops dead. In just one night in Manila, we come across several murders. Witnesses say this suspected dealer was gunned down by masked men on a motorbike. This is the fourth shooting of the evening. It's been like this ever since Duterte declared his war on drugs. Most of the killings are in the country's poorer neighborhoods. These are the very people who voted for Duterte, believing in his promise of change. But now for some, hope is being replaced by anger and disillusionment. Your critics say that you have unleashed a wave of vigilantism, that you have unleashed a killing machine. False. Why is that? I have my police force. I do not need civilians to do it. I mean, why should I commission somebody to kill another? When I can always use the police, just order them to get them. Still, Duterte won't condemn vigilantes, admitting he would shoot criminals. If I, I was the father, then you rape my daughter and you kill them. Would you think I will wait? Would you think my anger can wait justice? Of course not. I will kill you. But even just by saying that you're encouraging vigilantism. Yes, I am encouraging. So what's wrong now? It's this attitude that critics say emboldened not only vigilantes, but police to commit murder. We arrive at a local police station in Manila. The holding cells are already packed with drug suspects. Suddenly, we hear gunshots. Just meters from the station, police have shot a suspected dealer. He's still in handcuffs and obviously dead. His body is quickly bundled into a tuk-tuk by men in plain clothes. We don't see any official procedures being carried out or any authorities conducting a crime scene investigation. As the family of the man gives chase, freelance photographer Dante Diocena captures it all. He spent months covering the war on drugs. Yeah. Even he is shocked by the brazenness of this shooting. Police tell Dante they shot the suspect in self-defense after handcuffing him. And they said when they are heading to the police station, the suspect are grabbing some gun of the police. That's why he, the police fight back. How much do you believe that? Outside police headquarters, Dante shares more about what his nights have become. How many murders have you documented? 100, 100 dead. The photographer says in his years working the crime beat, he's never seen anything like it. On the last president, this is not, will not happen. On the night shift, we just cover just a fire incident, uh, just a car crash, just a normal thing. But, but when the President Duterte sit as a president in our country, the killings are almost rampant. Dante's photos published in newspapers worldwide 
provide a chilling account. Almost every night we saw the victim of extrajudicial killing. It's almost everywhere, every night. How has this impacted you personally? It's hard for us because we didn't help. And sometimes we just cried. For us, it is so hard to, to cover that scene. Because it's, every night it's full of tears and blood. Every single night. While Duterte denies his police forces carrying out extrajudicial killings on his orders, one man is admitting responsibility. Before a Senate committee, Edgar Matobato says for more than 20 years he murdered for Duterte as a member of his personal death squad. The self-confessed hitman also claims Duterte, who was mayor at the time, also joined in killing drug suspects, along with political opponents. Did you know Edgar Motabato. She's a, uh, she's a fake witness. Are I'm you saying a, that his claims that you ordered him to kill all these drug why, dealers is incorrect? Why would we employ a person, ign an ignorant guy, who ever can imagine that you would take one like that? A bodyguard at the same time, a hitman? He claims to be a bodyguard, and when there's somebody to be killed, you say, oh, hey, bodyguard, hit that guy. Since testifying, Matobato has been under the protection of a senator, saying he fears for his life. Mr. Matobato. We Mr. managed to meet him at a secret location. Armed security, guard the room. Why have you decided to go public now? Dili nako. I couldn't sleep anymore because of what we did. What I can say is that what's happening is not good. That's why I came forward, to let the whole of Philippines know. What happened in Davao is the same as here in Manila. The same style of killing. People wrapped in masking tape, guns planted on innocent people. President Duterte says you're lying, that he doesn't know you. I couldn't do anything without his orders. I receive a salary from City Hall. It's impossible that he doesn't know me. Matobato has IDs he says proves he was employed by Duterte when he was mayor of Davao. But from your view, who is Rodrigo Duterte? He's not a good man. He's fake. In front of you, he can be really nice. But once he turns his back to you, he's bad. It was wrong for him to kill so many people in Davao. I ask if he is scared of Duterte. Whatever is going to happen, if I need to pay with my life for what I've done, I wholeheartedly embrace it because I wrong so many. People are not animals who just kill. I should pay for my sins. Despite the years of death squad rumors, Duterte has never been charged with any human rights violations. His public still seem to support his hardline policies. With an approval rating of 86%, he is one of the most popular presidents in the history of the country. Even members of the press corps are captivated by him. I still have this spark every time I see him. Every time we see the president, we get, wow, he's, he's really good. We, we, we adore him because of his works, because no other president can do that. When we first met Rodrigo Duterte earlier this year, 
he was mayor of Davao. Free to ride his big motorbike, and in his words, romance his many women. But now as leader of the Philippines, his every move is monitored by a massive security detail, even on nights out. All the boys have won. The last time Duterte took us to his karaoke bar in Davao, he sung to a crowd of regulars. For helping me to grow, I call it that I know. Now his only audience is his staff and bodyguards. His security shut the place to the public. I, I don't know why they decided to bar people from entering. So you're not liking the strictness? Yeah. Uh, you want to see other people. Well, girls, like your friends, especially girls. It's actually ginger. Besides missing women, he says there are other downsides to his new job. He's bored of the constant meetings. You will see when you observe me. Okay. You'll be with me when I'm like, go up to Manila. Raise me up to Mosena. Always the night owl. He finishes in the early hours of the morning. Yes, sounds good. The next day, we're in the presidential palace. The seat of power in the country. It's a regal setting, with hallways adorned with portraits of past leaders and of the present one. Duterte's schedule is, as he says, packed. A swearing-in ceremony for new government appointees. A meal with dignitaries. Later, he finds time to summon us to his guest house. Hello. Hi, Steve. President Duterte. How are you? Al Jazeera. Uh, <laughs> He's you? promised to show us how a president lives. Paulus is over there. Then I commute uh, by uh, a tugboat to and fro. But I, I live here. Uh, I do not live in the palace. You don't like living in the palace? No. It's centuries old and, uh, you know, uh, Usually, palaces and things uh, count the number of leaders, and they kind of stay there. And it seems that they do not want to go out of that building. You're <laughs> saying it's haunted. Yeah, that's what I've been telling you. <laughs> Duterte says he also prefers staying in a simpler place. His security asked him not to show us his private quarters. Uh, they might want to place uh, the bomb if you didn't know where I, I sleep, in what part of the room. When my wife and uh, daughter... But he still does. Actually, it's a very small room. And oh, wow. It's, it's really a very simple affair. And I use a mosquito net. Duty calls. We're running late. He's needed for a high-priority briefing on another deadly battlefront. It's a battlefront he arranges for us to see firsthand. This is the island of Holo in the southern Philippines. It's the heartland of the Abu Sayyaf, an armed group that's pledged itself to ISIL. I deliver a message to the Canadian government and to the Philippine government. Most of its funding comes from the millions it makes kidnapping foreigners. Those who don't pay a ransom are brutally killed. This Abu Sayyaf footage, retrieved from a dead fighter, shows just how heavily armed they are. Duterte is determined to wipe them out and has dispatched his own heavy weaponry, along with 10,000 troops, to do the job. 
When you see the terrain from up above, you realize that no matter how many thousands of troops you have, it's a formidable task to root out a group of hardcore fighters. So, sir, how are operations going? General Arnel de la Vega is the man Duterte's put in charge of the mission. Since the president assumed the office, we've made uh, lots of improvements as far as our military operations is concerned. The Abu Sayyaf have had a stronghold here for decades. Fighters regularly melt into the general population. And many local communities still secretly support the group. That makes it a hard fight for Duterte to win. In August, 15 soldiers were killed in one ambush alone. Do you believe, though, that the Abu Sayyaf can be completely wiped out? If they're still supporters, or uh, the community still supports, or maybe uh, their relatives will continue to support and sympathize with them. If and when we neutralize most of them, then there will still be some members who will be left behind that will try to pursue their cause, whatever that cause is. When your own commanders aren't sure they can win against militants, it seems a bad time to ditch powerful friends. But that's exactly what Duterte is doing, abandoning his longtime alliance with America. The following night, we meet up again with the president for a private dinner. This is a uh, typical Chinese. Uh... Over noodles, he explains why he's moving away from America. He doesn't trust they will defend the Philippines. Some people argue that you need to carry a big stick to talk peace. Well, but but that, that big stick has never, uh, will never happen because America will not go to war. Duterte has long had a dislike of the U.S. and sees them as colonialists. Hypocrisy will bring, bring them to nowhere. You're the one invading a country, destroying people, dropping bombs. And their expedition to Iraq was a disaster. And until now, they have yet to explain why. Killed, they, they, they destroyed a nation, killed the president. So it really sounds like you don't want America in the Philippines. Yes, I believe they should be out. Because of their bullying. Some people said that I have to be very careful about the CIA. And I tell them that, man, if it's my time, it's my time. But somebody has to stand up against them and say, you know, don't f with me. Don't f with me. He also asks, who are they to judge him on human rights? You know, we're, we're on the same league. At least in my country, I'm shooting the drug people. In America, you are an innocent uh, a man. And just because you're black, you white, white officer shooting a a running black man and he fell down and just pumped bullets into the body. Bigotry is very much alive in America, supported by the Russians. Instead of the U.S., Duterte says of world leaders he admires, Russia's and China's top the list. Xi Jinping is a very courteous person. Putin has uh, Hilly Billy style, but uh, his, there is sincerity in his word. Duterte says instead of criticizing, the West could learn from the Philippines. While many Western countries are turning refugees away, Duterte announces he's embracing them. They can always come here, and we will welcome them until we are filled to the bins, and it's all right. We will survive. You would accept all yeah. the refugees? And I said, send them, send them to us. We will accept them. We will accept them. They're human beings. Whether one agrees with his policies, he's unapologetic of his leadership style. Some fear, though, that you have aspirations to be a strong man, a dictator. No, I, I would say I'm a hardliner. For the 20, 30 years that I've been, I have always been a hardliner. Life.
a hardliner who at 71 says he is very aware he's in the final chapter of his life. Life is very short. Yeah. Earth is 500 billion years old. The flick of a finger to not even get a part of it. That's how, we, how fast the flick is done. Duterte knows his time is short, so he's determined to make the most of it for his country's sake, no matter how much the world condemns him.